Ahem. Let's take a moment to set the scene, shall we? Snow is falling gently but heavily from the sky, and in the great wilderness of northern Michigan there stands the biggest pine tree you're likely to ever see. Its trunk is as wide as a train car, and it stands as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Now Paul Bunyan and Babe, his massive blue ox, look small standing in front of the tree. This is where our story begins, on the morning of Christmas Eve. And here I thought we were, Big Babe. Ha ha ha, this is the perfect tree. Larger than life, just like our guest of honor. Big might be a bit of an understatement, Paul. I estimate this tree is ten times the size of the largest you've chopped down. Roughly estimating that you can swing your axe fifty times per hour, I calculate it will take you a full day just to get through the bark of this tree. Oh, nonsense, babe. I'll just put a little more wild into my woodsman. She'll be down before you know. I highly doubt that, Paul. Nobody asked you, babe. Babe sighed as Paul hefted his gargantuan axe and attempted to hack into the tree. But the axe bounced off. And Paul was shocked. It had blunted. You know, I generally... Don't you say it. Uh, looks like we're probably going to need some help here. Do you still know how to get a hold of Picos? Do overconfident lumberjacks blunt their axes? <laughs> Real flannel ripper. Would you mind rounding him up? I get a feeling he might be able to help us ride this one out, if you know what I mean. Within a flash, he was gone! His hooves making thunderous sounds as he tore through the wood. And soon, another sound came. Screaming wind filled the wood as a huge tornado tore through the wood, sending snow into the sky, making the whole world look like a snow globe. A rowdy cowboy by the name of Picos Bill was saddled in the middle of the tornado. He reined in the tumult to win just as easily as any man might work a horse. With a casual whistle, he calmed the storm and gently landed on the earth. Well, if it ain't my favorite plaid pilgrim. That babe tells me you were drawing on more than a mouthful again. Doesn't everyone just love babe? Well, he certainly is one brainy bovine. Now tell me, what's got your britches twisted? Oh, Bill, I'm not sure if you know this, but Santa takes only one break every year on Christmas Eve. He rests the reindeer and takes a load off, and it just so happens that he takes that very break right here in these very woods. You're telling me that Mr. Holly Jolly kicks his boots off here? <laughs> yes! Babe and I have taken to being his host for these past few years. Now this Christmas, I want to give old Kringle a Christmas display he'd never forget. Well, as you can see, my chosen tree here has decided not to budge. I thought maybe you and your, uh, trusty steed might be able to lend us a hand. Pardon the stereotypical speech, but tar nation! That tree is titanic! I can't make any promises, but for Capitan Christmas, I'm willing to throw caution to the wind. With a wink in his eye and a fierce whistle, Picos threw his reins into the sky, and there they stayed. However, the moment the twister started to take shape is when Babe came back to the wood. Paul, the average tornado has a wind speed of 50 miles per hour. Now might be a good time to head to safety. Would you give it a rest, babe? As Paul and Babe took cover, they could hear the wild yelps of Picos as his twister slammed into the massive tree. A fury of wind and limbs crashed together over and over again. But the tree would not be moved. Finally, Bill let a whistle and came back to the earth. Snow falling all the harder. Whew, tell you what, boys. That tree could teach the Alamo how to stand. Well, thanks for trying, Picos. You know, Santa's been really happy with a blue spruce in the past, and I suppose he'll be just as happy with one this year. Now, hold on there, partner. I ain't done yet. Let me see if a good buddy of mine might be able to take a crack at it. Hours later, a newcomer knelt before the tree. Tell me, how'd you become friends with this tree whisperer again? Actually, Paul... It appears as though his approach to the cultivation and selective felling of trees is rooted in scientific methodology. Babe, please. Ha 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 
why you two split my side. Oh, ho, ho. oh, old Johnny and I met a few years back when there was a spell of drought in Arizona. Uh, let's just say I brought the water, he helped the trees drink, the town people were saved, you know the drill. Well, like that time Paul and I saved that cabin from a landslide. Yeah, the way I heard it, Paul caused that landslide in the first place. Back to Mr. Appleseed, please. How exactly do you think he's going to be able to help us with this tree? See, everyone just thinks he goes around planting trees all willy-nilly-like. But that's just scratching the surface with Johnny. It's almost like he can talk to trees. Shoot, I could swear I've seen trees mosey on out of his way when he comes a walking. If there's anyone who can help us figure out a way to upend this sucker, it's him. He's like a tree wizard or something. Now Johnny looked like any old average show might. He had wispy blonde hair and an easy grin that made people feel like they could trust him. Now he spent several hours walking around the tree and pretty soon it became dark and Paul became impatient. Hey, Chia Seed! Apple Seed, look! It's almost time for Santa to arrive and we haven't made any progress with the tree. You gonna be able to help us take it down or what? First off, it's a real pleasure to meet you, Paul, and babe, tales of your heroics are told all over the world. Really? Well, it sure is nice to know that we are appreciated. Hey, can you help with the tree or not? Oh, absolutely not. What? 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 Boys, boys, this tree has a root system that digs over 100 feet into the ground. I may have a gift with trees, but this tree, I've never seen anything like it. Thank you for bringing me here, Billy. Of course, partner. Wait, then what have you been doing this whole time? Admiring it. You know, I think this might be one of the very first trees. You have to admit, Paul, that's pretty amazing. You know what else is amazing? While Arbor Day here spent all of his time admiring, we lost all the time to prepare for Santa and the reindeer. Sheesh, no need to be so dramatic. I could have us back at your cabin lickety-split. So Picos roped himself some wind and the boys were off to Paul's cabin to prepare for their guest. Paul and Babe built a huge fire. Picos cleared a massive landing site for the sleigh and Johnny, Johnny got busy making dessert. Apple pie? No. Johnny Appleseed is known for flapjacks. Why does everybody always assume he'd make apple pie? Well, we did it, boys. No tree. And I'm sure old Kringle will be comfy just the same. And Johnny, you may be known for apple trees, but these flapjacks are the stuff of legend, my friend. Glad you like them, Paul. The secret? <laughs> it's... At that very moment, the sound of sleigh bells filled the air, and they knew their guest had arrived. Oh, a huge red sleigh pulled by the reindeer I'm sure you can name landed in the soft snowy wood near the cabin. Santa stretched and stood and clapped his hands together. And with a mighty laugh, he leapt from the sleigh and bellowed, Ho, ho, ho! Paul and Babe, it's so good to see you, my dear friends. Oh, and you've brought some new guests this year. Uh, one Picos Bill and Johnny Appleseed, if my eyes don't deceive me. Howdy, Nick. Mr. Claus. The pleasure is all mine, boys, and thank you so much for helping out with my annual holiday respite. Are those flapjacks I smell? Only the best you'll ever eat, Santa. The men ate and talked and shared stories, and at the end of the meal, to the surprise of everyone, Santa presented each man with a gift. To Babe, he gave a child's letter that detailed why the blue ox was her favorite hero. To Picos, he gave beautiful new leather reins that were oiled to perfection. To Johnny, he gave an enormous spatula that would never bend or break. To Paul, he gave a wooden carving of himself and Babe that he might always remember how special his best friend was. Paul, sad that he didn't have the tree to offer in return, began to tell Santa all about it. I'm telling you, we tried everything. You don't know how much I wanted to be able to bring you that tree. <laughs> Paul, don't you know? You've given me the best gift of all. Your friendship and hospitality warm my heart in a way that I can never repay. 
one of my favorite things about this night is a chance to spend time with you, my friends. Your companionship is worth more to me than gold. Ditto, partner. Paul, he's telling the truth. Babe snorted approval as all the men clinked their glasses. Picos could have sworn he saw Paul wipe a tear away from his eye. And after the reindeer were fed and Santa was all but mounted up, Johnny smiled and spoke up. Before you take off, sir, I invited a friend who would like to send you off with a song from his heart. Everyone gasped in surprise as the Sasquatch walked out from behind the trees. He wore a Santa hat on top of his hairy head, and his face was split in a heartwarming smile. Wait until you hear his voice. It's angelic. The Sasquatch cleared his throat and began to sing. Santa boomed a massive laugh and spurned the reindeer on while the song filled the night sky. He sounds glorious. Reminds me of the way my mother sang. And so our story ends. On Christmas Eve night, and a new tall tale is born.